Laura Moira. Do I have that correct? You got it yes. right. Okay, excellent. <laughs> now, uh, for those of you who have not watched uh, your documentary series yet, Making a Murderer, let me give a summary and see if I leave anything out that's necessary for our conversation. Stephen Avery is convicted in 1985 of a rape and goes to jail for 18 years. He's exonerated when DNA proves someone else committed the crime and he's freed. On his release, he sues the local police for $36 million. In the middle of that case, he's accused of a murder, and the same local police are heavily involved in gathering evidence against him. Your film follows the trials of Avery and his nephew, uh, Brendan Nassi. Did I leave anything out that we absolutely need to know before we go on? No, I wish we'd met you 10 years ago. You would have saved us a lot of time, actually. <laughs> well, that's an important point. You have worked on this for 10 years. How did you first learn the story of Stephen, uh, Stephen Avery? So it was back in November of 2005, and Stephen Avery appeared on the front page of the New York Times, and the headline read, Freed by DNA, Now Charged in New Crime. And we were immediately fascinated by the headline and, and went on to read the story and understand that um, Stephen was in this incredible position of having served 18 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. Mm -hmm. He became one of Wisconsin's first DNA exonerees. Mm -hmm. And within two years of his release, was charged with murder. A lot of people look at the, the documentary series and they look at it as a, you know, uh, a whodunit. But that doesn't seem to be your intention in making it. Why did you make this? What do you, what do you hope the message of the documentary is? Uh, well, we actually like to say it's, it's more a how done it. You know, what we were documenting was the process, you know, and that's what justice is. It's a process. So can we rely in the, on the, these verdicts at the end? One of the things that people take away from watching the documentary is that poor people don't have a great shot in our justice system that they don't have access to uh, representation. He has access to great representation because he's already won a, uh, a, a verdict that got him $100,000 he could use to pay lawyers. Um, but that poor people often get railroaded through the system. Mm -hmm. um, do you see any hope from this documentary? Because it's a fairly bleak story. <laughs> I'm only on episode seven. No spoilers. Everything works out OK, right? Everybody's <laughs> happy at the end. Keep going, keep going. Yes. Yeah. Is, 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 do you get any sense of hope from this? Um, I, I think you do. I mean, the people in the series have not given up hope. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we understand that for viewers, this can be overwhelming. I mean, we're throwing a lot at you. Mm -hmm. And it can be terrifying what you see. But you The know, terrifying thing is that you could end up accused of something that you had not done and have no way to defend absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. This could happen to any one of us. And, mm -hmm. you know, good luck. If that happens, mm -hmm. um, but you know, don't worry. You do not want to be the subject of one of your documentaries. Is what you're saying. That's right. That's do you right. think? I mean, regardless of of you know whether the what the intention of it was, people are saying, people are debating all over the United States after watching your documentary. Is he guilty or not? What do you think? Um, I mean, my personal opinion yes. is that the state did not meet its burden either in Stephen Avery's case or Brendan Dassey's case. So mm -hmm. I would say. In my opinion, not guilty. In your opinion? I mean, I pretty much agree with Laura. But is I, that because I you don't think he's guilty, or they haven't? They haven't. Because who am I to say? Without giving anything away, there are things that you say. Well, as, if you can't get rid of that evidence, if you can't discount that evidence, mm -hmm. well, there's there's blood, there's bones, there's location. All mm -hmm. of those things say. Well, it's reasonable mm -hmm. to me to consider this person at least a a, a suspect for it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is is it the idea that we've got guilty or not guilty in our system, as opposed to proven or not proven? That's a great point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, there are things that he could be guilty, but. Is he guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Nothing I've seen, and I've seen a lot of stuff. Nothing I've seen has convinced me of that. Um, what would you like to make your next documentary on? Something like Cuckoo Clock Makers <laughs> or <laughs> Ice Dancing or something like that? Has it been hard to live with this story for a long period of time? I would love to follow Florence and the Machine, but I haven't reached oh, out to her yeah. yet. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. That sounds fun. Yeah. How do you feel about the success of this? Because it has become, you know, you are having a moment right now for your work, but is it difficult to enjoy the level of success that you're having with this when you know at the heart of it, there's a tragedy for, for the family who lost a daughter and for the man who may or may not be falsely accused? Absolutely. I mean, we feel like there are no winners here. What, what we hope to achieve 
by sharing this story with as many people as we can is really to try to engage Americans and for people to feel a sense of responsibility and to understand their own agency here. For instance, if we see someone in a perp walk on television, we can check ourselves and try to reserve judgment about that person because at that point that person stands as an accused, has not been proven guilty. Well, I mean, hopefully one positive outcome of this could be more people taking an interest in our criminal justice system or maybe even more young people wanting to be defenders of people who get pulled into our justice system because without proper representation you just become a cog in the machine. That's right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so Lovely much, Stephen. Thank you so much. Laura, Laura Ricciardi and Moira Demos, Making a Murder, is streaming right now on Netflix. We'll be right back.